Crackpots, insurrectionists, and weekend terrorists are laying the groundwork to turn our government into a Trumpist nightmare if the former president somehow manages to get back into the White House in 2024. The AP reports on the plan laid out by a Project 2025, a government in waiting for Trump's return. Quote, the idea is to have the civic infrastructure in place on day one to commandeer, reshape, and do away with what Republicans deride as the deep state, firing as many as 50,000 federal workers. The goal is to oust employees they believe are standing in the way of the president's agenda and replacing them with like-minded individuals. That should sound familiar since it's directly linked to Donald Trump's authoritarian plans overall. The New York Times reported in July that Trump and his associates have a broader goal to alter the balance of power by increasing the president's authority over every part of the federal government that now operates by either law or tradition with any measure of independence from political interference by the White House. Numerous former Trump officials are involved with Project 2025. And look, it's not some shadowy behind the scenes effort. It's been open about its plans to gut worker protections and dismantle environmental protections. It includes their plans to make pushing right-wing Christianity the federal government's job. It's all in there, in the nearly 1,000-page playbook calling on the next president to maintain a, quote, biblically-based, science, social science-reinforced definition of marriage and family. As Guthrie Grace Fitzsimmons writes for MSNBC, concerned about policies of this kind aren't only about the possible return of Donald Trump to office. This is about the next Republican president, whoever it may be is going to be pushing Christian nationalism. Joining me now is David Korn, Washington bureau chief for Mother Jones, MSNBC political analyst and author of American Psychosis, which comes out on paperback next week. David, I always say that the most dangerous people when it comes to protecting our government, it ain't the guys in shaman costumes, right? It's not yeah. the weekend warriors with Punisher yeah. signs on their, on their flak jackets that they got at REI. Okay, it's men and women in suits who write policy, who slowly but surely undermine our government. Put this Project 2025 in the frame. How dangerous is this? Well, let me uh, expand from that a little bit, because a lot of people who watch, a lot of people concerned about authoritarianism in, in America, focus on Donald Trump. Right. And I think rightfully so. He incited violence. He says we should spend the con suspend the Constitution. And as we just saw, he has his own campaign plan to impose an autocratic you know, government should he cut back into the White House. But what we see with Project 2025 is a project funded at $22 million right. that has dozens of right-wing, far-right groups that have been in town and that are considered established right-wing organizations, like the Heritage Foundation. They've been doing something like this since 1980. Their first mandate for leadership was for the Reagan folks when they were coming in. And so now they have joined forces with Trump to sort of say, this is how you can do it. We know that Trump isn't capable himself. Right. He doesn't have the discipline, the understanding of how government works. So here we have, you know, dozens of groups, hundreds of people, millions of dollars to put together a schematic plan for Trump to come in. And at the heart of it is getting rid of 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 or right. more federal workers. These are the people who, like, if the president comes in and says, I want to drill to, on the mall, they say they're a career civil servant. They go, that's not what the law says, Mr. President. This is why you can't do this. The sign says that. Well, now, under this plan, Trump could say, you're out of here. Right. You know, you know, there's a loyalty oath. There's an oath to my my policies, if you don't do what I want you to say. And so the whole idea of an independent, expertise-driven, civil service government workforce... Would be gone. Would be gone. Would be gone. I want to play you some sound, because uh, this is really important. This is Paul Dans, he's director of the 2025 Presidential Transition Project on firing federal employees, because I think this is key. Yeah. Ultimately, what we, what we want to do is make sure that the federal bureaucracy is... is being directed through the by the people through the president and his team here's the thing we already have the republican organization i keep saying they are not a party they are a terrorist front or they're, they're basically a cover for the maga terrorist movement yeah. and remember they didn't even have a platform in 2020 right, they just right. wanted a loyalty pledge right essentially what this guy is saying is we're going to put nice words about it but we want every federal employee to have a loyalty pledge not to the government yeah. I mean, you know, not to the government in general, not to American citizens, but only to Donald Trump. 
How dangerous is that, and how close would that take us to just absolute authoritarianism? Well, it, I think it's highly dangerous because there are a lot of issues out there, whether it's, you know, uh, 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 public health, right, you know, even foreign policy, you know, where there are things that are not up to now have not been considered partisan. There are policies, there are ways to do things. If you want to build an airport, there are regulations, the EPA has people who specialize. Now Donald Trump could come, come in and say, well, you know what? I want that airport near my country club. And I don't care what EPA regulations it violates. If you say it's wrong, you're fired. And so the chilling effect this is going to have, and anybody, you know, out there who might watch MSNBC at home, they come in and, they, well, you know, you're watching MSNBC, you're out of here. Right. And so it, it really gives them this total control. And it's part of this whole move on the right to come up with a unitary executive. For decades, they've been pushing this, saying that we don't have balance of power and checks and balances, that the president gets to run the show. It's not what the Constitution says. Nope. I don't think it's what the founders envisioned, but it is an authoritarian, autocratic government. And when you put that in the hands, particularly of someone like Donald Trump, Trump, a, a narcissist who wants all this power, it is a recipe for tremendous danger and for the consolidation of power that undermines democracy. And also, the idea of saying that this is about civil service, to me, the concern that I have is it puts this patina on legitimacy. These people are terrorists, right? right. You're, you're saying, well, I'm going to create the foot soldiers for people who are essentially operating under mm -hmm. terrorism. We've seen abundantly clear in the past and present that Trump and the people who still work with mm -hmm. him, if they're not in jail by then, have no issue with using violence. So what does well, that he, also well, say? Well, that they want to cover for violent acts? Great example. Donald Trump has said that if he comes into office, he will pardon the January 6th insurrectionists. Well, let's take another step further. Let's say that he comes back in and there's something like that again. Right. He can order, under these new plans, he could order the Justice Department to not prosecute people who attack his political enemies. He could encourage it. Could part of this is taking control of the whole federal criminal justice system. So that's what they want to do. It's in the book. The people have been talking about this outside of this project. So he would be able to create his own shock troops and then give them impunity to do whatever he wants to in order to retain power. You know, it'd be, it, it really causes the mind to reel if you think about what future elections and politics will look like if one person is given that much it's power. It's given that much power. Yeah, one man can't have all that power, and it would turn stand back and stand by from just a catchphrase to actual policy. Thank you so much, David Korn, for joining us this evening on The Readout.